All right, guys, in this video, we are going to build our first formic control, which is the input component. Since this is our first component, I sort of want to break it down into individual elements, which will help us better understand the props that we need to pass into the component as well. In the UI, an input formic control would look like this. There are three distinct elements. A form label, which is nothing but a label HTML element. A form input, which is the field component from formic, which in turn defaults to an input HTML element. And finally, the field error, which is the error message component, again from formic. To implement this input component, let's take a look at the props we would need. First and foremost, we set the control prop to input which is required to determine the type of formic control we need to render. Second, we need a label prop, which will be the label text for the form field. Third, we pass in the all important name prop, which is required by formic for the field as well as the error message components. Finally, we pass in type attribute, which is email for our example. It could also be text or password based on the form field. All right, with this UI and props in mind, let's write the code. We're going to approach every form of control in three steps. First step, we write the code in new component specific to the field type. In our case, an input component. Second step, we write the code in the formic control component. Third and final step, we write code in the formic container component, which will also help us test the code we write in the browser. So let's begin with step one. For step one, we need to create a new component for the input formic control. So within the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called input.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a function component. For this input, we would need the field and error message components from Formic. So let's import them. Next, let's talk about the props. This component is going to receive a number of props. From these props, we are going to destructure label, name, and leave the rest. Finally, we are going to add in the JSX. And this is pretty much what we have already seen in the YouTube form. We're going to have a div tag with class name equal to form control. And within the div tag, we first have the label. The text is going to be the label prop and HTML4 is going to be equal to the name prop. Next, we have the field component. We set ID equal to the name prop, name equal to the name prop, and we are going to spread out rest of the props as they are. Now I have decided to use name as the value for the ID attribute as well, but if you wish to, you can pass in an ID prop as well. The last part is the error message component, and we set name equal to the name prop. We do, however, need this to appear in red color. So let's quickly create a text error component. So within the components folder, create a file called texterror.js. Use the snippet rfce to create a function component. And for the JSX, return a div tag with class name, error, rendering, props.children. Now, back in our input component, on the error message component, we set the component prop to text error. Make sure to import it at the top. The error messages should now appear in red color. All right, that is our first step, creating the input component. The second step is to add code in our formic control component. And this is really simple. From props, we extract control and rest of the props passed in. Then for the switch statement, if the case is input, we return 
the input component that we have just created. On the input component, leaving out control, we pass in rest of the props. That is our step two, returning the input component if the control prop is input. For the third and final step, we add code in the formic container component so that we can test the code we have written in the first two steps. First, we add a property in the initial values object. Email, an initial value is an empty string. Next, let's add a required validation to this field. So in the validation schema, email, yup dot string dot required and the error message is required. Finally, in the JSX, we can include the formic control. So within the form tag, formic control and make sure to import it at the top. Now let's add the props. First and foremost, we need to specify what kind of a control is this component. So we say control is equal to input. Next, we specify that the input type is email. So type is equal to email. After that, we pass in the label prop, which is equal to email. And then the all important name prop. Name is equal to email. Again, in lowercase. Format it and that completes our step three. And I just noticed that I have submit instead of button. So let me quickly change that. All right, we can now save all the files and test this out in the browser. On page load, we have our input field along with the label. I click inside and click out, we have the validation. I can type in something and the form state updates. I enter a valid email and click on submit. We can see the value in the console. So our input formic control works as expected. Let's go over what we have done one more time because understanding one formic control will make it easier to understand the rest. So there are three main steps. First step, define the input formic control. Extract the necessary props and use them. Label for the label, name for ID and name on the field component, and name on the error message component. Rest of the props are passed as they are to the field component. Once you have your component ready, you then import that component in the formic control component and return it for the appropriate case. In this video, we return it for the input case. Once we have reached this far, all we have to do is test if the component works. For that, we use the formic container component. We specify an initial value, validation rule, and then include the component in the JSX, passing in the appropriate props. So, we now have a reusable input formic control component that can be used in any form required. But we have five more controls to go. Let's take a look at them in the upcoming videos. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.